And they see that. So what should we do if we're trying to sow seeds into these people? I'm telling you, you may not come back next week. And that's okay, because I'm just doing, I'm being obedient, right? Stop. Stop beating them up with the words of God. Don't hold them to the expectation of a believer if they're still a sinner. Do you know how you change a heart? Do you know how, forget about a heart, do you know how you change a soil that's compact and hard? It's called work. What do you mean? You've got to go get a rotor tiller. <laughs> till up that soil. After you till up the soil, then you have to go get some other like good, good soil, some good rich soil, and you put it in there and you kind of mix it together, right? So what would happen as opposed to taking the Bible and just beating these people time and again, God change them, and then just stop and do what St. Francis of Assisi said, preach Christ at all times. What? You just don't have to do that, man. How am I supposed to preach Christ at all times? Listen to the rest of this. And if necessary, use words. Preach Christ. At all times. And if necessary, use words. Stop beating them up. Stop oversaturating them. And live your life in such a way to look to you and say, you know what? There's something different about you. And I want what you have. That's all I'm saying. What you, what you like yesterday? Uh, that we're not supposed to like give scripture to the people. No, that's not what I'm saying. To these people, what they want to see is a change and transformation in your life. Pray, 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 pray for these people. That God will do a miracle and soften their hearts. That He will do the work. To make their hearts the first soil. That's the first soil. The second one is the rocky soil. And again, what does he talk about? This gospel message comes to these people. Right? And all of a sudden, boop, it grows. Hey, hey man, hallelujah, it's growing. Look at these people. These people were a, a, a kid in my youth group. Who I prayed for diligently, day and night, that God would do a miracle, just a miracle in his heart and to his life. We went to a youth convention, and I remember as he went forward and accepted Christ, we had a, afterwards we had a big circle wall jumping up and down, like high five, and like, this is so exciting. The next day, like we got back to church and he gave a testimony about how he knew that God was gonna do a work through him. He wanted to reach the entire there is high school through him. He went home that night and burned all his death metal CDs because he was he was a new person and the old things have gone. And I remember I sat in the back and I just listened to him. And afterwards I just put my arm around him and I said, Hey, before God wants, before God uses you to reach all these kids for, at your school, I think that he can do that. How about this? How about we just start meeting a couple times a month and we just want to do a Bible study? How about you just build the discipline of praying every day? I agree that God could use you. I think that you have this ability. But there's some other things that you need to do to let your, your roots grow deep. You have some rocks in there, buddy. He said, okay, Pastor Ben, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. Yeah, when you want to meet. And weeks went by, and I never saw him. Months went by, and he would come to youth group once or twice. And the same kid who was so on fire and giving everything to God and burning the CDs, he didn't change his group of friends that he was hanging out with. He didn't go look for a new sphere of influence. And his words were about this deep. Well, Jesus promises what? In this world you will have trouble. The reason why your roots grow, the reason why your roots grow deep is so they can have the life-giving nutrients. If you've seen plants where it's not very good soil, the sun comes up, <laughs> the troubles of this life come out, scorches it, and then dies. About two, three months after we went to this youth convention, the same kid who stood in front of everybody and said, God's going to use me to change the high school, dropped out of high school because of the troubles 
of this life. I went over to his house one time just to, to check on him, so he could see how he was doing. He was listening to the same death metal music. Now again, I'm not talking about music. I'm not talking about going and burning all the CDs or anything that would deem ungodly. My challenge is for these people to build the discipline. Just like if you've worked soil and you know it's a rocky soil, what do you do? Get rid of the rocks so they can grow deep. How many of us are plugged in to the giver of life? So, shallow roots, pretty soon, wither, then dies. Then Jesus talks about a third type of soil. Same thing, farmer comes along, sows his seed, these people start to respond, start to grow, we start to see some fruitfulness. But here's the problem. If you have weeds in your life, weeds as in sin in your life, as this fruitfulness starts to grow up, the weeds will come and choke that out. And this is what I'm coming to realize. The weeds are just indicative. The weeds just indicate a deeper issue. How do I know this? When we moved over to the parsonage, and let me tell you again how much we love living there. For all the work that you guys did, we are so very grateful. But remember, we, we showed up, and my wife suffers from this thing called overperception. So she notices things that other people may not notice. Um, it's really a gift, even though if I say it's not, it's kind of a curse. Right? It's her blessing, it's her gift, right? And so she says to me as we're outside, we're playing with the boys one day during the summer. And, and so she looks in the rocks, and there had been some weeds that had grown up in the rocks. And so she makes a comment of, you know what, I sure wish that we could take care of that. I hear, I need a hero. Yeah. She needs me to come save the day. Woo. I'm going to fix the problem. Right? So when her and the boys go, go away somewhere the next day, I go out there, I get the trout, get my gloves on, I'm ready to attack these weeds because I'm going to be her knight in shining armor. So I'm going through it all and I'm just plucking these weeds. <laughs> Several hours later, she comes home and remember it's her blessing, the overperception. She gets out of the car and she said, Honey, look at those, look at those rocks. Did you do that? And I said, yeah, baby. <laughs> she asked me this question, remember she was over perception? She said, wrong question. Did you like dig down into the rocks and pull those weeds out? Like by the roots? And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is what I realized. I spent hours on my knees. I wish I had some knee pads, right? Little rocks. I'm plucking these things. It looks good. I smoothed it all out. But she's right. I plucked it off at the surface level. It's hard work till I have to dig down and pull the weed all the way out, right? And so while I was the hero, I was the knight in shining armor, walking like, yeah, look at me. Two days later, two days later, two days! I'm like, really? Two days is all I get? All the old weeds were there, plus all of our friends that came back with them. And I was like, Phew. and she said, hey, next time we have to dig down. We understand on a natural level. Weeds come back. But what happens in churches? What happens to the people that we know? And we look good on the outside. Right? You say, you know what? Like, I look at inappropriate things on the internet. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to pluck it off at the surface level. The root is lust. Right? We look busy all the time. But really, we're not. We want people to think good things about us. So now we're busy and people say, hey, what's going on? No, I'm just trying. So we pluck off and we're not going to say that. But the root is pride. We have roots of laziness. But on the outside, we look good. We're the hero. We're walking around like we're somebody. 
That was the Sadducees. That was the Pharisees. That's what Jesus was so mad about them. On the outside, you were a whitewashed tomb. You looked on the outside. Those rocks were a whitewashed tomb. They looked good. I was the hero. Just you ask one little question. Did you eradicate? She didn't say the word eradicate. Did you remove the roots of those weeds? Because until you remove the roots of those weeds, the gospel message is going to don't kill it. Those weeds will kill it. So what do I do? Pray. Nothing you can do in your own power. And so the top of the we talked about Christmas to the eyes of King Aaron. It's about control. Who's on the throne? Is it you? Or is it God? Until you step off and say, God in my life is completely to you. And these these roots that I have, these weeds that I have, I've plucked them off at the surface level. I want you to come in and remove them completely. Then we have the fourth, the fourth soil. This is the ones that are fertile heart. You hear a gospel message. And that one message, that one seed, reaps a harvest 20, 40, 60, 100 times. What was there? And church, let me tell you, I think a lot of us were sowing seeds. But here's the struggle. We're sharing with all these different soils. And we wonder, God, why in the world are, are we not reaping a harvest 20, 40, 60, 100 times? You know what? My walk and my talk are matching up. And what happens is, for some of us, we've, we've become like this second soil. What do you mean? That we've had this excitement. That we're trying to reach out to other people. And there hasn't been a harvest. And we start to lose that excitement. We start to lose that enthusiasm. But church, listen to what Paul says. Paul talks about this. Paul says, hey, in this church of Corinth... You know what? I may have come and I may have planted the seeds and Apollos may have watered it, but it's not about Paul and it's not about Apollos. God's the one that gives the increase. For too many of us as believers, for too many churches, we're results driven. We want to look and say, where are the 20, 40, 60, 100 times? Where are these people at? God says to Isaiah, He says this, that when my word comes from my mouth, it's going to accomplish what I want it to accomplish. It's not going to return to me void. You, what? It's as simple as this. That it's about what we said earlier, trusting and obeying. We're not to be results driven. I mean, look, at the best, it's 25%. One out of four. We're not to be results driven. We're to be obedience driven. If God says, when I tell you to go, I want you to go. When I want you to tell you to preach, I want you to preach. That's what it's about. It's about obedience. We should be obedience driven. The church, I don't know about you. There's times where I get frustrated. Because I'm preaching to these people. Where are they at, God? Where are those people? I think back to the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah had a 30 year ministry in which he did not see one person come to a relationship with God. Could you imagine that? That dude was either insane or he was obedient. 30 years? God, I pray that's not me. So, what are we going to do? What's the goal? On your way in, I gave you a piece of paper. If you had a piece of paper, pull it out. Because in 2013, we're going to read the words of God and see what they say.